Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible, diverse, incredibly interesting wide world of pens. So it's a very recognizable mammal, I think. It's a Norwal. And the way they've done that printing is it's almost like an ink with a number of different sheening colors in it. It matches what they've done on the lettering here. The pen is identified by this little inventory label at one end. It's nice that they have a little tab that you slide out the pen. It comes with a nice manual. And you can see that variation in color even more here. It's a very beautiful pen, and they give you a wrench, which is great. And I think this pen is a very good value. Feels good in the hand. Feels as good as any other pen that I have. Has some good weight to it also. I like that cap band engraving there. Just done well. Good, solid, substantial clip. Very well made. You have a little uh, metal insert there at the top finial. Nothing at the bottom. And of course, it's a piston filler blind cap. And the cap unscrews with one, two, a little bit over two turns. We'll see a nice branded nib. It was a double broad, but Dean, who sent me this pen, has ground it into something of like an architect. So it'll be interesting to see how it lays down ink. This fits well in the hand. That section is almost an optimal size for me. My fingers just touch a little bit, but I can slide them around. Threads you don't feel, so you can hold this any place you want. And as we probably guessed, it does post not very deeply. And it kind of maybe posts on that blind cap. So if you're not careful and you turn this, like with a Twisby, you can expel ink if you have it full. So that's the pen. I really do like this resin. I think they did a great job with it. A lot of color uh, swirling around. We'll do a little bit of LED x-ray later on. Well, Dean included a nice note when she sent me this Norwal Dragon Net Sapphire pen that she had ground the nib and said it may require a little bit more work. So I'd basically use these three tools, a loop, to look at the nib closely and see what it might need, some thin brass shim for flossing the nib, and this nail file, which has coarse, medium, and fine. Between these three things, I was able to just do a little fine tuning on the nib to get it to write well. I don't know whether this will work. So I'm trying a little bit different lighting to show you how that nib was ground. And I just did a little bit of tuning on it. And now it writes fairly well. Part of uh, doing close-up photography like this is getting enough light, getting the light at the right angle, and getting a background that gives you the right aperture opening in the camera. So here's my first writing sample after I've done some tuning on the nib ground by Dean. It's a nice writer. It certainly lays down a nice line. And you get normal line variation just by the angle and the direction of your 
writing. I spelled Schuylkill wrong. I kind of knew it. And the ink is Volga River. It has some sheen. Here's the writing on Toma River paper. It's generally a paper that's good to bring out sheen, which shows up when you put down a lot of ink on a paper that doesn't absorb it very well, so it stays on top. And as that ink slowly dries, it develops a sheen, kind of a reddish sheen for this ink. So I've uh, done a little bit of disassembly. That piston has the flat spots on it, which is where that wrench would fit in. And it appears to be metal, but it could just be plastic with some uh, chrome plating on it. One of the things that people have talked about is, does uh, Norwal, I'm not going to try to pronounce its new name, use the same nib assemblies as Moon Man? And the answer is, yes, they do. Yeah, I put a Moon Man assembly there. What's nice with Norwals, they have a O-ring here at the top and one at the bottom. There's a slot there for the O-ring to go in, but most Moon Men don't come with the O-ring there. And most of them do have one at the bottom, which I think seals up nice. You can hopefully see how um, Dean has ground that nib from a double broad to pseudo-architect. Uh, interesting to see how it will write. We're in winter dark mode, and we're going to bring in the LED. I think this resin is very, very nice. And the pen, every time I pick it up, it's a nice substantial feel to it. You can see how that glitter is, is in that resin. Diamond dust, shall we call it. Nice insert there at the top of the cap. If we look inside the cap, we'll see a nice plastic liner. And there's a screw at the bottom that holds that uh, little metal emblem at the top and also holds in that insert. But it also has a little ledge in there to seal up against a section. So should be nicely well done. And as we see, the barrel has the same type of interesting resin in it. It's a little bit of different color combinations, but that's what you get with a resin made the way this one is made. Hopefully you're enjoying the way that it looks. If we put the LED light in there, we'll see some tint transparency, but you got a nice ink window, so you don't really need that transparency. Let's see how the cap looks. Yep. We can see a little bit more of the way that resin flows and all the different colors and combinations that it has. Really well done. Thought I'd take time to talk about piston fillers and using the Norwal as an example. This is all the way down and the piston stops before that ink window. And I think the reason for it stopping is the ink window diameter is smaller than the barrel. So the piston has a physical stop. If we look at a, another Chinese piston filler, a Twisby 580, you notice that piston also stops before it gets down to the nib section area and it turns out very easily but if you compare these two pens that stop coincides with that ink window so both of these the piston moves up and down about the same distance and the other thing that they share in common is this wrench works on both of them if you need to unscrew that piston assembly and let's take a look at the tried and true German version. This one uh, is a pen that has a sad history to it. I wanted to bring in the trusty LED to show that that piston, there's a little bit of a gap there. It's my Stroby LED. Uh, and you can also see that crazing because I used Parker Penman Sapphire ink. And I had to adjust it. Originally, the piston only come out, only came up that amount, and there was a large gap there. So I adjusted it to make the gap smaller. Couldn't remove it altogether. This one, when you bring the piston down, it goes all the way down and stops right where that section and nib assembly are. So in theory, you could get a nice full fill because you're not drawing up a lot of air to begin with, like you do 
when the Twisby is all the way down. So it's pulling up that air before it starts pulling up some ink. But generally, you turn it upside down, get the air out, push it up until ink comes out, and you can get a full fill from this. So what's another piston type system? Well, here's a TNZ one. And you'll notice as you turn the blind cap, the piston goes down and it keeps going and going and going until that cap comes off and you can literally take the piston out through the front. So there's no reduced diameter in there to stop the piston. And that, that uh, silver ring there is loose as you can see. But then putting this back together and getting it to pull that piston all the way up can sometimes take a little bit of time back and forth. I had to work on it a while. As you can see, that blind cap is not all the way down because, and that piston has reached as far up as it's going to go. It's up against that piston collar. So there's pluses and minuses to all different piston mechanisms, but all of these share in common the wrench. So I felt I wanted a nice shimmering ink to go with how the labeling on the pen is. So Volga River I've used a few times in the past, not recently, but it really does a nice job. Let's see how it works in the pen. Well, I did fill the pen using the piston, and I did try my trick of forcing out air and filling it a second time, but I still couldn't get a full fill. As you can see, that ink is probably about two-thirds full. We'll see how long it lasts. It's nice that it doesn't stick to the wall very much, so you should get a good flow. This is my second Norwal. I have this Nautilus, which I really loved because of the finish and the way it's built and those little portals. It's a similar cap band, which is interesting that they've continued that design. This is ebonite versus turned acrylic. Both of these are good size pens, and the nibs are very, very similar. A little bit of a ink flow challenge, but generally you can write fairly well, very consistently, and when it does write, it's very wet. And I like that. So what I think of the Norwal Schuylkill pen, I think for the price it's excellent. Here's it on Gold Spot, and here is on Drumgargle. Here's some descriptions of the pen. You can get measurements, dimensions, and everything else, so I'm not going to go through that. And it does feel good in the hand. There's a lot of people that might complain about a pen not having a quality feel. I'm not exactly certain how objective that comment can be, but this pen certainly feels good in my hand. It feels, feels substantial, and I enjoy writing with it, which to me is what a pen is all about. I'll never get that right. The uh, challenge with writing with this is that it's a custom ground nib, so you're not going to get this writing experience from a Schuylkill that you will buy. But this is an indication of the feed and the nib working well to put down a decent amount of ink. So I don't write pens anymore. So this gets a positive rating, thumbs up. And if this is a pen that you find interesting, and that's why I do these videos, so you can decide whether you like a pen or not. And I'll give you my opinions, but my opinions are my opinions. And what really matters is your opinion. So if you have one, let me know if you like it. Or let me know if this video helps you decide whether you might want to own a Norwal Schuylkill pen, which comes in many different colors. One I'm certain that you might like. Piston syst billing system works great. Feels good in the hand, nice acrylic, well done. So we've reached the conclusion of this video. Thank all of you for watching. 
Hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying your inks, enjoying the pleasure of putting ink down. I certainly do. If we've reached the end of this video, and we're going to say bye-bye. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your pens.